Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So today we're going to talk about four different ways to protect yourself from the spot price of gold dropping. Now, one of these is my new 1924 gold sovereign. Uh, one is the one I already had. I can't remember which is which. But we have a Perth Mint and a Melbourne Mint. So that is the new coin today. Very nice condition. And I had to pay a bit of premium for those as well. So, like I say, one is new, the other one you've seen before. I can't remember though which one was which, uh, which mint mark is which. So, these are, yeah, two very nice George V sovereigns. So, almost a hundred years actually since they've been around. Interesting, I wonder what they would have bought a hundred years ago compared to now. So, anyway, for today's video, we are talking about ways to protect yourself from spot and dropping. And I've got four ways here for you today. So, the first way is literally to do nothing. So you don't sell, and therefore, if spot does drop, it doesn't really affect you in a negative way. Sure, you know, you might have potential paper profits or losses there, but if you aren't actually selling, you aren't actually realising any profit or loss, then it doesn't really matter. So if you're thinking about the long term, it doesn't really matter what the short term price is doing. So that is one option. You could even actually benefit from that by obviously buying more and reducing your average cost. So one thing to note on that, I don't recommend doing like a, a lower average cost on certain things. It just depends what it is you're doing. So we probably all know somebody, maybe even you've done it yourself, who has bought a stock or a share in a company and the price has gone down. Maybe it's really gone down and they've thought, oh, well, if I buy some more, then, you know, it'll average me down and then it goes down further and they average down more, and before you know it, you're just in a big hole. So I'm not recommending averaging down on poor fundamentals. If you have something that has not fundamentally changed, and it is purely just the price that's changed, so if, for example, in gold, you know, if spot drops by $100 or £100, and nothing has really changed, if anything, the economic situations are probably getting worse around the world, then, you know, it doesn't really have to affect you. And like I say, you could benefit, but if the fundamentals of a stock or a share had gone down and plummeted, you know, if their profits are being uh, forecast to drop, or if something's fundamentally changed about the business, maybe the business is, you know, uh, suffering changes and becoming obsolete, for example, then I would just, you know, take what money I can and, and run. But ideally, I wouldn't invest in that in the first place. So with gold, like I say, you can just hold. If you haven't bought it on uh, with debt, then you don't have to service any debt. You know, you've just got it sat there and it's not costing you anything apart from perhaps a small storage fee. But otherwise, you know, you should be OK. So next thing, you could potentially buy premium coins. So the collector market isn't really tied to spot in some areas. Now, you could get high quality coins like perhaps this one and people would perhaps pay a little bit of premium. I didn't have to pay a premium to buy it. It just, you know, it was just lucky. It just came in what was best value and, uh, you know, got a really nice quality one. So the Gillick Sovereigns often often come in quite nice condition because they obviously weren't circulated and they're not that old. And so, you know, you can get quite nice condition ones there. Uh, but as such, because they're relatively easy to source, you know, you're not going to get any superb premiums. And, uh, you know, you might get the odd coin that appreciates quite quickly, but... You know, you're not probably going to see a coin just suddenly jump uh, unless there's, you know, a few factors in play. Like, for example, the QE2, uh, the final 2022 coin there, that did become quite popular. So you could be picking, you know, premium coins and hoping for them to jump up. Uh, there is obviously risks with that. You know, you could find that a certain market for a certain coin just doesn't really take off like you hoped or perhaps it uh, gets saturated. So it might also eventually come good, but it might just take a while. So for example, the Memorial Sovereigns at the moment, they don't really seem to be doing that well, but maybe over time they will. So with buying uh, bullion coins and just picking out the really nice ones, obviously that would uh, put me in a pretty good position because I just paid a bullion price. And if the spot does drop, you know, I might be able to recover that on the premium coins if, if I wanted to, like I said, not necessarily having to sell, but just if you did want to. Um, another thing could be a potential issue is 
if you go and buy a particularly rare coin, then what happens if there's like a big hoard of them discovered? So these 1989, this is a quintuple sovereign. There's only so many minted, but if you're looking at coins that were minted in quite large numbers, but just seem to be very rare now, because perhaps they've just been melted over time and just not many have survived. Well, what happens if a big hoard of them is just discovered and suddenly, you know, you've not got many and now you've got a whole bag full of those really rare coins. That could be a potential issue. So not uh, immune to, you know, problems and errors, but that is a strategy you could perhaps consider. Uh, another one is to hedge your position with something like a spread bet. We call it in the UK, we have spread betting accounts. I'm not sure what you have in the US, but effectively you could sell or short the gold price. So whenever I'm doing this, I always use XAU and USD, which is gold spot versus US dollars, because it's a commodity and internationally the dollar is used to trade those assets. So I don't really look at the gold spot price in pounds when I'm doing trades like that. I'm only really looking at the US dollar price because of currency fluctuations and things like that. Uh, where's my coin gone? Here it is. So something to consider if you are in the UK and you are considering doing that, then you want to have a little look at the US dollar price and not the pounds price. So for example, at the moment, gold has gone up in pounds, but that is due to the pound being weak versus the US dollar rather than the you know gold price actually going up. So something to consider, you can sell, you can put in a sell order. And what is effectively happening when you are shorting a market like that is the broker that you're using is effectively buying the shares and you're paying a premium to like borrow them. And then when you close your trade, you're effectively you know cashing out and paying that premium in between. You can also use options, which people have used on shares and markets and things as well. I'm not an options trader, it's not something I do, but it is another option to do the same sort of thing. In the UK, the options are not treated as uh, tax friendly as spread betting. And so that's why I've never really got involved with them, but it is another option and uh, not something I teach or anything. So, you know, you're not gonna learn about that here, but just something you can look into if you are interested. Now, finally, the fourth one, you could potentially diversify into other assets. So if gold does go down and it does stay down for a long period of time, it's not your entire wealth tied up in one place. So the old, don't put your eggs all in one basket. That's, you know, pretty sound advice, unless you know the correct basket. You know, if you can predict the future, then you might be right. You know, you might have the best basket and you know exactly what's gonna happen, then by all means, you know, go all in on whatever it is you believe in. But remember, you know, if you are diversified, you're in a few different asset classes, then all of them have to go down the pan for you to be in, you know, a serious trouble. And obviously if you're being responsible, you know, keeping yourself in a good financial uh, stead and perhaps keeping yourself, you know, a bit of a cash reserve, things like that, then you should be fine in the longer run. So obviously things can happen, markets can go down, markets can go up. So make sure you are looking after yourself and hopefully gold looks after you one day. So I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll talk soon.